Today on the beam channel, I introduce you, introduce you to using property-based testing for stateful systems. But first I wanted to let you know that if you want a more detailed introduction to this subject so that your team can get in your product, I teach a training course on exactly this and would be happy to bring it to your company. If you've been around Erlang and the Elixir world for a while, you have no doubt heard about property-based testing, sometimes called quick check. And you might have wondered how to get started with it. I should also point out that there are a few different tools for doing property-based testing on the beam. There is Quivic Quick Check, which is commercial and has an amazing feature set, but it's kind of on the expensive side. I'm going to show this video with Prop Check for Elixir, which is based on Proper for Erlang, which is free and under the GPL version 3. There's also Trick, by the way, which is not real well maintained. So one th cool thing you can do with property-based tests is test invariance on stateful systems. In order to demonstrate that, I have a gen server which can take two messages, let's code right here, increment and decrement, and will return the current value with value. It's a, it's a counter. So what kind of properties could we use to test this? For a very simple one, we could say that there should not be any sequence of events for which the system will crash. Mind you that this does not mean that the code is correct, just that it won't crash. That's an important distinction. So here's our simple gen server again. I call it server crash, just it's a demo. This is an overly simple example, but it should illustrate the point. So we can generate a sequence of events until we find one that will cause it to crash. So here is the test. This is the property. If you've never used a stateful test before, let me walk you through it. At the top, we have the property itself. It creates a list of commands. These are done here in the command one function, which here chooses between calling the increment and decrement functions. We could also call other functions and parameters. It then starts the server and runs the commands and stops the server, then stops the server. If the result is not okay, then we are gonna output some error messages. Finally, it will show us some aggregate info. You'll also notice that there's a trap exit. That's important because what we're looking for here is the crash. So with the trap exit, what we're gonna see is if the server crashes, we're gonna get that as an error, which is what we want. So here we have the initial state, which gives for our model. In this case, I set it to zero and I ignore it because we don't care about the value. And the next state three function updates that. Finally, we have precondition two and post condition three, which you normally would pattern match on and valid would validate various aspects of the, of the system. Here they always return true, which is to say the test should pass. Now I've introduced a bug in this, which I didn't show. So let's run the test like that. And you'll see that it actually fails. So I've introduced a bug in the code, which I didn't show is that if the value is seven and the event is decrement, it's fairly arbitrary, then it will crash with us with the value of server bug. Yeah. This can stand in, a, this is sort of a stand in for a more complex failure condition in a real application, but there's only so much you can do in a short video de demo. And it's also be pointed out that if the value is seven, it'll find it pretty quickly. If you were to set it to say 70, which I did, it would take much longer. It took about 1500 iterations of the test for me to get to there, to that one. This is because on average, the value of a random walk, which is what this is, will go up with the square root of the number of steps. And it just takes a while to get to the particular conditions. Now this is a very simple property, but it is a pretty useful one. Because if there is a condition that will cause your gen server to crash, you want to know about it and then you can fix it. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. Please share it if you do and subscribe down below. If I can help you in some way answer with Erlang, Elixir or property-based testing, please uh, give me a shout via the Calendly link down in the description.